Right then, my aftermarket goodies have arrived. Um, so let's just quickly go through those. I have a set of uh, die cut paint masks um, from Edward. So uh, nice and simple, but uh, a nice to have. We've probably got, it's mainly canopy, but there's probably wheel covers in there, but I've already done the wheels. Um, and then we've got these um, decals from Avalon. Um, and we have, what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six aircraft in there. But importantly, we've got this one, uh, the Queen's Flight 68. Overall red with black anti-glare and reduced serials. Um, so, and then we've got our decal sheet and the decals, I have to say, are quite, quite nice. Um, they have a fair amount of decal film margin. Uh, I'm not sure I've had decals from this company before. Um, yeah, they're not too thick and chunky. So I expect they'll go down okay. Um, what we've got is the main decal. So if we look here, we've got the roundels and the, the, the tail markings, and that's it. We don't have the anti-slip. Um, we don't have any of the stencils. So we're still going to need to utilize um, the bits and pieces that are in here. So we've got anti-slip that we can use um, and we've got some of the standard uh, decal markings. Now, the propeller, um, on the uh, decals that we've got with the kit, we've got these little yellow tips that we can use, um, which is quite quite a nice little um, feature. Um, but <laughs> the Queen's Flight didn't have yellow tips. It had, had red, white, and blue striped tips. So uh, we're going to have to emulate that. Um, but Otherwise, everything else uh, is there. We've got we've got the um, common stencils. We've got the stencils that we can take from one or two of these others that we can put in place. And then we've got um, the replacement decals there, which includes the um, really small li little um, roundels there, which leaves me with... Um, decals for another five options there so I'm thinking we might end up doing another chipmunk because and I usually say right well I've built that now so I don't need to build another one but I really quite like that um, it reminds me of the old British Airways sign and it's a bit different to the the others which are very similar to what you can get in the airfix kit but that is very different um, and we've got all the the decals for that so I quite like the idea of that so that's steering me towards um, a, a second chipmunk but also I've got these 3d printer decals and we we've got two sets in there which I haven't appreciated um, and we appear to have Two sets of um, uh, dashboards. We've got two sets of harnesses and two sets of cushions. Now, I need to understand this because uh, it, it's a twin seater. So we'll be using two of those, well, two of those, and one set. So I'm not sure. It's almost like there's not enough harnesses um, because there isn't enough harnesses to do four seats, only two. So uh, I'm not quite sure what's happening there, so I need to look at that. And we appear to have two different styles of cushion. Now, um, I'm thinking of possibly using the uh, black ones for the um, Queen's Flight. Um, rather than these standard ones and use those standard ones somewhere else. But um, yeah, I uh, need to do just a little bit of research. Now, I've never used 3D printed decals before, so this will be a first for me. I do have some. Um, I, I do have some others. I've got some Edward ones, which are 
um, uh, life uh, one three fifty scale um, life belts, um, and they look really nice. But I haven't used them as yet. So uh, yeah, I'm told that you just float them off. You dampen them, moisten them, and they come off to look just like ordinary decals. But there is um, no instructions with this at all, um, as far as I can see. I've not opened it yet, actually. But the decals will be my next job. But yeah, there is no, no instructions. There's just a picture of what you've, you can clearly see you've already got. So I do feel a little bit odd. <laughs> But yeah, you you almost want to peel them off. But uh, yeah, right, okay. We're gonna have a play with those next because the cockpit is the next thing we need to do. Okay, so I had a little read of the uh, Kit World website um, and it explains that you treat them like ordinary decals, but what you don't do is use any decal softening liquids. Um, it also says needs to go on to a perfectly flat gloss surface. Now, um, I've just um, compared the size of the decals with the dashboards, and they don't cover the whole width of the dashboard, so we do have to paint it um, in the black that we're using, and we will need to give it a little gloss coat as well um, for it to bond to. So. I'm just preparing the surfaces so when it comes to the um, the dials I'm removing the molded on dials um, and then we can just paint that surface um, which means at the same time we can paint in these surfaces as well But there is no instructions on where to place them and there appears to be extra dials and I have no idea where they go so all I can do is leave them off unless they're supposed to be the compass tops or something like that but they seem to be on a square carrier so I doubt that is the case. And we do have two different dashboard shapes. Add it up to it. So I'm going to finish cleaning these up and give them a lick of paint, and then we'll get back to you when we're varnishing. Okay, so I had a little read of the uh, Kit World website, um, and it explains that you treat them like ordinary decals. But what you don't do is use any decal softening liquids. Um, it also says needs to go on to a perfectly flat gloss surface. Now, um, I've just um, compared the size of the decals with the dashboards, and they don't cover the whole width of the dashboard. So we do have to paint it um, in the black that we're using, and we will need to give it a little gloss coat as well um, for it to bond to so I'm just preparing the surfaces so when it comes to the um, the dials I'm removing the molded on dials um, and then we can just paint that surface um, which means at the same time we can paint in these surfaces as well. But there is no instructions on where to place them and there appears to be extra dials and I have no idea where they go so all I can do is leave them off unless they're 
supposed to be the compass tops or something like that, but it seemed to be on a square carrier, so I doubt that is the case. And we do have two different dashboard shapes. Add it up to it. So I'm going to finish cleaning these up and give them a lick of paint, and then we'll get back to you when we're varnishing. Right, paint should be dry now, um, so we can. Um, put a little bit of varnish down ahead of adding these decals. Now, I've just been doing the paint masks, um, and as always with Edward paint masks, there were a couple that needed a bit of a trim on this back screen here. They didn't fit particularly well. And I've got to say, I don't like this solution of they, they put a cross in the middle part way um, to try and deal with the bulbous window, but. Uh, the end result is it doesn't fit and I ended up taking it off and cutting it into two pieces and then on this last one I've cut it into four pieces and it's gone down better. Uh, it needs a bit of liquid mask dolloped on top. Um, so they've gone on but um, I don't know. Uh, there's always seems to be one that doesn't quite fit um, but most of them did so that's okay. So because we're just doing um, some relatively small areas, um, I'm just going to um, put a little bit of uh, this Vallejo gloss varnish on. Now this isn't the gloss varnish that I'd, I'd use. If we're doing decals on the outside of the fuselage, then I tend to use this um, um, varnish from uh, VMS um, because it's ready to go straight through the airbrush. Um, use a 0.4 needle um, uh, and away you go. Um, so that's much better for, for uh, pre deckling It's acrylic and, and gives a, a good gloss coat for, for decals. But um, you can brush paint it, but it's really designed to go through an airbrush. Because we're brush painting this, we're going to use this, um, which for a long time has been my preferred brushable um, gloss paint. So I'm not going to worry too much about where the harnesses go. I'm really doing the surfaces where we've got the um, dials going on because um, it's a much bigger decal and I want it to sit down and then we're going to do the seat bottoms where the cushions are going to go Being careful not to get it on the back because we don't want to have to mess around with putting matte varnishes back on or satin varnishes in this case. There we go. Relatively quick drying as well, this gloss varnish. And as always, I've put too much on. Okay, that'll do. So that's the only areas where these 3D decals um, are going. We've already put the decals on the inside of the cockpit for this. So that is pretty much it. Right then, let's have a go at these decals. I think I'm going to start with the cushions now. Looking at the pictures on the Kits World website, they have used one of these cushions at the front and one of these at the back. Now, obviously, it's a trainer, so that might have been the case. 
I don't know, no expert on the subject. So uh, I'm going to go with what they've done. Now, there is a couple of little pictures which are helpful on the website, the Kit Wheels website, of these decals in place. I've got to say, some of these decals are quite close together. Um, okay, so let's put this first one in our water and see what happens. And whilst we're doing that, we can cut out some of the others that we're going to use. Now, I guess if you're using the uh, figures, you don't need these harnesses, which might be why we've only got, got one set. But you appear to need... Well, I don't know. Are they, are they used? I don't know. There isn't one set. Two set, one set, two. Well, maybe, maybe we do have enough. Well, I'm going to cut this lot in half and see if we can just use this one set of decals. So the plan would be to use that on the front set. We still need to use that on the back. Don't know. Let's see how we get on anyway. Right. Now normally, I give a decal a rub with my thumb and then it moves and that's exactly what's happened here. So, taking it off. Well, my first observation is it doesn't really fit. Right. Well, that's a waste of space, isn't it? Right. They don't fit. So, let's have a go at cutting them down. It's like a little lip on it, and I think the thought process is if we can get rid of the lip, we might just fit. Right, well, I don't like the cushion, so we're not using it. That, quite frankly, is junk. What's the point of something that's massively 
oversize. It's going to be the same issue with that one. When you look at the um, picture on their own instructions, they've trimmed it because this shape here at the front, they've cut off, which means you then end up seeing white of the side of the decal. So, yeah, not enamoured with that. Junk. Okay, let's I need that to dry out now. Fortunately, we didn't chuck away the kit supplied ones. which do fit. I think they're two different sizes actually. Yeah, that fits in perfectly. So we'll paint those up. <sighs> right, let's have a look at the dashboards. Now, there seems to be two separate dials, but there's no explanation as to what they are or what you want to do with them. So that's another thing that I don't like. Not doing so well, are they? Right, let's get that on the soak. Right, so let's see if we have better luck with the dials. Yeah, definitely that fits. Now yeah, that looks okay. Though the uh, model instructions would have you have a black background um, as opposed to this green background. It does overhang a little bit. It's a strange thing, it's like a thick vinyl. Right, well, let's see how that dries. I'll do the other one. They don't need long in the soak, I'll be honest. But I can't use those now until I've cleaned up and removed these straps from the cushions. And I've got to be honest, I'm sort of thinking let's just paint them up. I think that might be what we do this time. I have the dials in place. Um, they do overhang a little bit. They're slightly oversized. Um, and it's a, it's a bit like the early days of Painted Etch. They're okay. Um, but they're not quite there yet. Um, when these have finished, they're not settling particularly well. On one side it keeps popping up and I'm not sure why because it's on a completely flat surface. Um, but you get this edge 
that's a sort of a, a white colour. So I'm going to have to paint that in black. Um, and obviously it's all sort of matte. I mean, they look lovely. The detail is really, really nice. But we're going to have to go around all of these and put a dot of gloss varnish on, I think, which should make it look really quite good, I think. But yeah, that's what we're going to need to do. I think touched up and varnish, they'll look all right. Yeah, they just look a little bit chunky. Um, so and they're quite thick. And you can see here at the top. And push that down because again it's not quite sitting flat now maybe it'll settle I don't know um, but you've got the same problem here where the printing process has stopped and that and it sort of steps down to to the cut point um, so we need to just touch that in and because it's oversized I'm not sure how easy that's gonna be so We'll have a look. Now I have decided I'm going to have a go at another cushion just out of interest. And when I put the plastic part in, cushion over, overhangs at the front ever so slightly. Well, this is just appears to just be too big, uh, and it's bubbling up in the middle, and it's not settling as a result. Yeah, it's just not interested in sitting down that. Just want to see if it'll dry flat. If it will then we might be able to use the cushions which will save me a bit of time um, otherwise um, we're either sanding all that off rescribing the grooves and then putting the 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 decals on or i'm just going to paint those in uh, and my gut feeling is just paint them in. at dry brushing here. I'm just going to tap a couple of paint chips onto this frame. Um, I can imagine getting in and out and servicing it, it got washed around a little bit. Oh, 
is less is more. So I'll just leave it at that. Okay, we can finally build this um, cockpit up now. I'm just going to glue the cushions in. I am going to give the cushions a wash, um, but not right now. Uh, we'll do that later on because things have recently dried, um, and the, though they're all right for handling, they probably aren't quite ready for um, a, an enamel wash on them. So we'll let them. Let them cure for a little while longer yet. Um, I have to make sure we get these the right way around. So this cushion goes in the back. The harnesses have got a slightly different arrangement, which is really helpful for identifying which one goes where. There we go, first one. Fits like a glove. On front of the decal. Um, there we go, pop that in there. Um, so, what I've done is I've painted the cushions in Ravel's Anthracite just because I had it to hand. It came in a starter set or something, I think. Um, and Ravel, Ravel paints are okay, it's just not a paint system I use particularly, so I don't I don't keep it in stock. Um, but I had that. Um, it's a variation of black. It's a it's a very dark grey. Um, it's a slightly different colour to anything else we've used in there. So just adds a nice little bit of contrast. Um, now I need to glue this in. That goes in nicely, just clicks into place and sits there, very happy. Okay, so as we go to our instructions, um, and we can cross them off now as done. And we'll put that in. Okay, so we can now glue that into our fuselage half. So I know this is just going to click into place because we have test fitted it before. I'm just going to put a bead of glue along that edge. There we 
that much there. Like I say, it just clicks really nicely into place. Thick is beautiful. Okay, that's looking seriously good now we've not finished with the cockpit i've still got one or two things I, i've left i want to do and um, the washes and i want to do a, a little bit of gentle scuffing around the seat but again i come back to it, it's the queen's flight and it would be well maintained but uh we are going to do some scuffing next. right we have these to add on next so let's have a look at what we're going to do with those We've been on this piece of uh, masking tape for ages. There we go. So they are different, so we've just got to understand that. It fits in the slot and then attaches there. Okay, that goes in okay. Okay, to make life simple and to get the task done quickly, I'm going to use Tamiya panel line um, just to put a black wash into our cushions and um, onto our strapping there. Um, because we've used dark grey, a black should really help um, justifying things a little bit. Okay, that should do what we need. So in terms of our build, we are now on step 12, which is bringing the two fuselage halves together. So let's click this together nicely. So we do have a little bit of a gap just here. Yeah, a little 
a small amount of gap filling to be done. Right, let's see if we can get this closed up tightly. So I'm going to start with where I've got no lip or anything. It's a real nice fit, but we're going to start with this area here because it's all fitting together lovely. Hold that together for a sec. That's gone together really well, actually. There's no uh, no ridges, no unevenness. It does fit really nicely. Right, let's do this next. I'm going to pinch it together at these points here. Put some glue in there and some glue in there. It sits on this little raised bit here, which is the bit that causes all those issues with sink. Right, engine bulkhead is ready to go in next and you're just going to pop that in at the bottom there and that fits in nice and snug Right, our bulkhead is on, so we can put this in next, and this is clipped in beautifully until we've put that bulkhead in. Yeah. Bulkhead is ever so slightly oversized. Just going to take a little bit off the top edge of the bulkhead, see if that just helps it sit a little bit more snugly. Yeah, happy with that, I think. So the next piece we plop in is this second um, panel of dials and that should go in here like so that fits in snugly so we'll just put a little bit of glue in the connection points I think rather than um, putting liquid glue afterwards it's a better way of preserving the paintwork and making sure that the uh, heat from the glue doesn't make it uh, wrinkle the paint which can happen there we go that's good I just need to put a satin varnish over that now I think that's a little bit of a head cushion or something like that so I'm going to leave that mat, um, this little bit just here. I'll show you, you can see there's a little raised rectangle, which I think we can just leave as it is. So, those look all right now they're in, but they're not, 
one of them is bowed a little bit because the decal doesn't sit flat so I don't want to mess with it now it's not perfect not happy with it um, wouldn't recommend them okay so that completes what we just done there we've done 15 17 B 17 A 18 19 Step 20 is the engine that we have already built up and then step 26 is adding the engine but I think I think my gut feel is not to add the engine at this stage so if we added the engine we would plop that in there the problem is we've then got to mask all that whereas probably easier to mask this now and paint it as it is and then put the engine in later and paint the various panels which go in like so afterwards right I've just test fitted the wings that and they fit lovely but it's a very tight fit and I'm just going to show you um, it took a little bit of working out there's two little tabs here and on the instructions it shows you putting those two tabs in and then patting that down and it all lines up well it's not quite how it works I, I found that if you lie it sort of flat and push it in it finds itself better and then push that in and keep your finger on it and then you have to get those level manually they're so tight so that is all in now and the fit is lovely but you really have to manhandle it into place so I'm going to glue that in because that's what we're trying to do at this point get it all built up ready for paint now then we've got a little bit of a gap forming just here on this curve I'm just going to see if I can clamp it together. Yeah, I can. So now it's clamped. I'll just run a bit of glue into the joint. Let's do the same on the other side. And then these wing tops should go in like that. Now we have uh, location pins, um, and I personally don't like location pins and generally remove them. Not always, um, but I find you can usually align a wing better if you don't use them the intention is good but the reality is the peg is never a precision part of the kit so it quite often misaligns parts for you so I mean it's what you did when you were when you were a kid building models you always got rid of the um, little pins because you knew they got in the way and I still sort of am in that habit okay we'll do the same on the other side I'll just whip the head off and then sand it make sure it's flush
Now that now means, of course, we have to align it by eye, and that generally means we'll get a better fit. Let's see how this is doing. Yeah, that's holding. Leave the other one on for a sec. So the wing goes in like so, sits on top. Yeah. And what I'm doing is I'm just shifting everything that way as much as I can, backing it into that joint and making sure that we haven't got a lip at the tip here. There we go. Everything nicely aligned, so let's get some glue on that. Yeah, that is sitting beautifully now, so I don't think there'll be much tidy up on this at all. Okay, suddenly looks like an aeroplane. Okay, that looks okay. It's the end of the wing that we have to make sure is correct. We don't want if it's overhanging that means we've got gaps. So it needs to be perfectly aligned. You might think we've created work for ourselves, but I can assure you it wouldn't line up properly with the pins. They just don't. Okay, wings are on. Next job is putting the flaps in and they just plug in, in theory, and also in practice. That goes in lovely, so spot of glue in there. Okay, that looks all good. So that is steps 31 to 33 done. And then we've got the tail which we've already made up. 34. So step 35, fit the tail. which just slides into place so we can afford to be a bit more liberal with the glue this time there, that looks great then we've got tailplane to add on there's options here there's two different types um, I've gone with the uh, type A there just balances on simple as that so
There we go, that's the tail on. Then we've got the tail flaps. Where are they? Okay. Well, they just line up and sit on as well. There's no location pins or anything, so that's really interesting. So, what I'm going to do, put some liquid glue on and then put another liquid glue on and then it slows down the drying and we'll just plug it into place. So effectively we made the part tacky so we could position it. Simple as that. So the first coat starts to eat away at the plastic, second coat sits on top, makes it tacky and allows us to then get in and use the tacky glue to hold it in place and it works like a dream he says usually there you go so tail on wings on suddenly we've got something that almost looks flyable let's uh Okay, so wheel struts next. Um, I'm not going to put the wheels on these just because it'll make masking a bit easier. So let's flip her over. Well, they couldn't be easier, could they? There's a little bit of play in them, so you've got to make sure that you're getting them straight. I'm not going to put the tail wheel in at this stage either. So, yeah, they're not straight. Okay. So that's that done, and that done. Tail wheel will come back to, propeller will come back to, right, some bits and pieces to go on underneath the wings there. And then we've got some bits to do with the canopies. Do I put the canopies on before or after painting? I need to think about that. In the meantime, we've got some bits to go on under the wings so pit up tubes and that sort of stuff